Hi, my name is Anisha Pindoria, and I'm a senior program manager in the Azure DevOps community team. Um, I'm joined today um, with Gopi. Gopi, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Gopi Nath. I am group program manager for Azure Pipelines. I take care of the continuous delivery pieces in the pipelines. Perfect, great. Well, it's lovely to have you on the show today. Um, so in this Sprint video, we'll be um, highlighting a couple of um, new features that have been um, released in Sprint 146. Um, a couple of things are we're going to be touching upon the new basic process in Azure Boards, uh, a couple of updates in Wiki, and then having um, Gopi talk to us about um, what's been going on in Azure Pipelines in the last quarter. Yep. So let's get cracking. Um, so in Azure Boards, um, the Agile process is the default process uh, for for new projects, and that's mainly because it's it it offers so much flexibility with work item types and states. Um, but for new teams who just want to, uh, or small teams who just want to get going and just started with uh, planning and tracking their work, or folks that are familiar with um, other terminology, it can prove a little bit difficult. Which is why we've introduced the um, basic process. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. Um, so I've just switched to my uh, base, uh, a, a very simple project. Um, and you'll notice that um, the basic uh, process here um, offers you three work item types. Um, the first is an epic, um, issues, and then tasks. Um, this makes things very easy and simple for folks to just pick it up and just get going with things. Um, the basic process is currently in public preview. Um, and it's available for uh, new projects uh, being created in new organizations in the central US region only at the moment. Um, so moving over to Wiki, uh, we've got quite a few things in Wiki that um, I want to show you guys today. Um, the first one being that uh, we've now introduced the monospace font for the editor. This makes things so much more cleaner and easier to read, which is which is pretty cool. Um, the next thing, which is my favorite, is that you can now create a table with a click of a button. So um, if you just click on this, create a table, there you go. Nice and easy. You don't need to worry about tabs and spaces. It's just done for you and you just get going. No, no, no messing around. Um, another one of my favorites is um, that you can now embed Azure Board's um, query results within the within the wiki, which is pretty cool. So if I go onto the ellipsis, um, you can click on the query results option. The query results pane will now open, um, and you'll be able to see both your favorite queries and your shared queries as per normal. And I've actually created a query to show me everything, so I'll insert that in there. And you'll notice that in the editor, it just adds a query table there. And in the preview failure, just go to load the results. You'll notice that it actually adds the query results table in there, which is fantastic. And it's not static, it's dynamic as well. So you can continue working and uh, without breaking the flow, you can uh, go ahead and click on the um, work items and just carry on working. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool stuff there. Um, and there's been a lot of stuff happening in Azure Pipelines over the last quarter. Um, um, uh, Gopi, do you want to kind of run through some of those things? Yeah, okay, thank you. Azure Pipelines, we had a lot more focus. There are a ton of features that we have you know, delivered. I'm going to focus on you know one particular feature on ServiceNow, but at a you know, high level, we have been enabling YAML you know, features. We have a YAML editor that is available in VS Code for people to just to go, you know, edit the YAML directly. Yeah. And then we have a great integration with GitHub at multiple places where, you know, you can actually just see the GitHub comments and then the full traceability that is available. We have optimized the GitHub app from authentication purposes from GitHub to pipelines. But for this, you know, today I'll just to focus on the service now. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Now the scenario for service now is um uh, you know, we have a release pipeline where, you know, you can actually, you know, build an end-to-end pipeline to deploy to your staging or production environments. But, uh, you know, we have a built-in approval system that is available. But what, what customers have been asking for me is, how do I add externals, you know, IT service management, like service now for the change process management? So, you know, today this is our deployment approvals that is built-in and available. Now, what the new feature that we have introduced is, if I go to here, we have a gate called service now. You can just see that there is a service now gate uh, you know, available. If I just you know show you a little bit more details on the gate, it's pretty much you know I am pushing some metadata from our Azure pipelines to service now. And whenever a code change is done, if the code change is approved, it actually just goes and then waits for an approval in the service now system. Once that service now change is approved, 
it will take the deployment to wow. forward. That's so pretty cool. It's, it's very seamless then. That's the feature that we have added. Yeah. Now what I will now do is, you know, without doing any changes here, I'll just trigger a flow and then, you know, show you a little bit more details on the pipeline. And uh, one second, let me just press refresh. I don't want to do any changes right now. And I'll trigger a new release. So it just takes the existing pipeline and then deploying it. Otherwise, because it is a continuous delivery system, it can actually, you know, if I do a code change, it can actually take that exact same code change and take it forward through the entire pipeline. While this is the release that is going on, you can see that this is the normal integration that we have done with an approval. This is our own approval system. It is waiting on me. Let me just approve it. And once I approve, so that's good enough. Now it will go ahead and then it does the deployment to the first stage. And I will actually just open it and then show you what's going on in this. So you can see as part of the first, we are actually doing a deployment to the, the AKS environment. And once the AKS environment is done, we are just taking bunch of artifacts and um, you know provision uh, the resources that are needed and then update my application. And this is the staging, the first staging environment that we are deploying to as our own approval system. The next system is the production system is when you will actually, this is the ServiceNow portal I have already logged in. You'll actually see a new request that will come in here after the staging is complete. You can see now it is at 135, but once this deployment uh, gets done, once the pipeline moves to the second stage, it will actually you know send me a request. There you go, now it is on the production. If I actually just goes to the logs, you can see that the first service now change request it is it would have created, but you know I haven't approved it, so it is now waiting for my approval. Only after I approve it, it will uh, take the process forward. So if I refresh here, you will see 135 to the new change request. 136 is showing up now. I got to approve this. I will now follow whatever workflow that is uh, you know defined in the service now the customers can say hey you know my workflow looks like first it has to be requested for approval by the corresponding people now now let's just say request for approval let it be approved by a certain set of people in this particular case i am now being uh, this person and then i'll just approve it and after approve our workflow is this has to be implemented so once they say implement this then the the change request is you know ready from the service now side and we have actually you know done you know few more things you can actually just see that the information you know comes in from uh, uh, azure pipelines you know which environment it is targeting you know that it is deploying to production and which release number azure you know release number 62 now if i just go back here now it will wait for in next three minutes it will continue to poll like the first poll has actually has failed now that it is approved the next poll in 40 in, in next four minutes will come back as green so it will wait until the service request is approved then only it will take it forward for mm. the production deployment this is pretty cool it's 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 so seamless and it just makes things so much easier with the integration and everything yeah. as well this is one of the key requests that you know customers have been asking you know yeah. how do we integrate with uh, you know the service now in a kind of a product for change management yeah, system. Yeah. So it will go through. But in the meanwhile, now let me just you know talk about few other features that uh, you know we have been you know working on. We are trying to improve our DevOps projects scenarios in the Azure portal. So in a nutshell, DevOps projects is about how do you get started super easily. Now I don't understand uh, you know AKS. I don't understand IoT. I don't understand a web app for container. How do I get started? But while getting started, I want to make sure that my pipeline is end-to-end -end set up, right? That's the key goal. So we have added a bunch of features there. Now I just clicked on inside the Azure portal, the click new DevOps project. If I pick up the .NET and then click next, you'll actually see that the IoT you know, support is being added. Wow, so essentially yeah. now you can now learn how do I do a IoT based deployment. That's one feature we have added. The next feature we have added is for Node.js, like you know, people are looking for the databases support, and then one of the databases that everybody is like you know looking for is the Cosmos DB. Cosmos mm -hmm. DB is the most popular database, you know, in the Azure. It is growing significantly now. We just added a you know Cosmos DB support. 
Now, if we you know, go ahead and then create your end-to-end -end flow, we will actually provision, set up a Cosmos DB, we will take an application, put it into your repo, and then we will configure the end-to-end -end pipeline. Wow, so everything is just so simple and easy. Yes. You, you just made everyone's life so much more easier right. that way. <laughs> so everything is set up for customers to take it forward. Perfect. Now you can clone the repo and then you build your business logic or your application. Yeah, yeah. I think those are the features that I wanted to well, highlight. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Thanks thanks so much for covering all of this stuff. I mean, this this was just the tip of the iceberg that we hit. There's a ton of stuff that um, have been has been coming out over the last quarter for Azure Pipelines, and I definitely recommend everyone going out and checking all the release notes. I'll also um, put a link in the description as well in the bottom uh, for um, the release notes for Sprint 146. Um, so definitely check those out and, and, and keep sending us the feedback as well, because that's the only way that we're going to be improving and we know that we are um, keeping our customers happy that way as yep. well. Yeah. Um, so thanks again, Gopi, for being Thank in the you. studio today. And thanks again, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you in the next Sprint video. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.